Hi, I'm Jan Bratt, and I'm a children's book author and illustrator. I'm also a member of the Boston Symphony family because my husband, Joe, has been a member of the orchestra for 58 years. He plays the double bass. I grew up in Hingham and went to youth concerts. Little did I know when I was 16 years old and sitting in the first balcony listening to, I think it was Bartok's um, Concerto for Orchestra, that my future husband would be sitting in the bass section. Um, I've always been a big fan of the double bass, and it led to a children's book. I loved going with the orchestra overseas to Europe and to Japan and listening in all the great halls in Europe, and was inspired when we went to Bavaria uh, because of beautiful buildings, the flower, flower boxes, and um, just the love of music there. And also, my another favorite time of year is Tanglewood, because it's an outdoor venue, and it's so romantic and beautiful in the Berkshire Hills. But I have a little question for Joe, because this is kind of what started, <laughs> started this Berlioz the Bear book, started it in motion. So Joe's bass is over 300 years old. And one time we were walking back after a concert, moonlit sky, and it was it had been beautiful weather, but a little bit dry. And I said, Joe, does it, this outdoor concert, does that affect your double bass at all? Well, that's kind of one of the challenges <laughs> of the bass player is always in Tanglewood. Uh, what happens is the glue that holds the instrument together is water soluble. And in Tanglewood in the summer, the concerts are outdoors. So the, the wetness of the hum humidity can sometimes open up the seam of the bass right along in here. And then what happens is the top will vibrate against the side and make kind of a buzzing noise, which is very distressing <laughs> for us when we're playing. And happily, we have a, a colleague in the section, Dennis Roy, who can uh, fix that and we fix it right away. But yes, it happens all the time that the bass will buzz in the summertime. So my seat J1, I have a perfect view of the double basses. And I've often noticed that you know, it is a large, magnificent, formidable instrument, but there are these carvings in the, in the f face of the bass. And you look down in there, it's r there's a lot of space. I thought, well, what kind of animal could live there? And of course, the double bass makes a buzz sometimes in the summer. One thing led to another, and I had the plot for Berlioz the Bear. Well, of course, now I had the plot of the story. There was going to be a bee that would set motion, set the motion, um, living in the double base. Um, I had the setting, which would be the Bavaria, a very beautiful place, lots of good things to draw. But then the characters, I wanted to make them, you know, larger than life and realistic and kind of th you could um, empathize with. So I decided I would make the bears be modeled after some of the members of the orchestra. And a first, uh, my first thought, of course, Joe would be Berlioz the Bear. He would be the, the, the leader of the orchestra with his double bass. And then Tom Martin, his red hair, tall and lanky, an amazing clarinet player. He would be perfect for one of these orchestras that you would hear in the little villages as you travel around Bavaria in the summertime. Um, so Tom Martin is, will be playing the clarinet. Martha Babcock is an amazing colleague. She's a wonderful player. And um, she plays a ch cello, actually. But I didn't want the cello to upstage the double bass. So in the book, she plays the French horn. But if you look on her case, it says M.B. Martha Babcock. <laughs> Tom Geiger is a percussionist. He plays the uh, bass drum. Very handsome and blonde. I thought he would make a good blonde bear as a contrast. And also his character shines through, hopefully. Harvey Siegel is a violinist, and he's Martha's husband, so I thought that would make a nice um, addition mm -hmm. to this orchestra. And then last of all is Nor Norman Bolter, who has plays a trombone, and so a, another a brass player in the orchestra would, would be in a great addition. And he has these l very expressive eyebrows, so I thought, well, maybe I could make that bear be one, the one who ha makes all the good expressions in the book. So all together, they make the, the orchestra. The mule, however, is not modeled after anyone. Now, I would love to read you Berlioz the Bear. Zoom, zoom, buzz. Zoom, zoom, buzz. 
Berlioz had been practicing for weeks, but now, just when the orchestra was going to play in the village square for a gala ball, a strange buzz was coming from his double bass. Why now, Berlioz said to himself. The musicians arrived with their instruments. As Berlioz watched them climb aboard the bandwagon, all he could think about was his buzzing bass. What if his bass buzzed during the ball? What if the dancers stopped dancing and laughed at him? Zoom, zoom, buzz, zoom, zoom, buzz, he imagined. Look closely, you can see on the mule's halter, he's got his nameplate Largo, which means slow in Italian. <laughs> Berlioz picked up the reins and clicked to the mule. Off they went down the road. He was so worried that he didn't see a hole in the road ahead. Suddenly, the wagon lurched to a stop. The front wheel was stuck in the hole. The mule took one look back, sat down, and yawned. <sighs> oh, dear, said Berlioz as he tried to get the mule to stand up and pull the bandwagon out of the hole. What can we do? We'll be late. I'll help you, said a rooster, who was passing by on his way to the ball. I'll just tug on the rope. I'll pull you out, he bragged. The rooster pulled and pulled, but the mule stayed put. A tabby, who was watching from the top of a fence, spoke up smugly. This isn't the job for a featherweight. I'll do it for you. And he took hold of the rope and pulled, but the mule wouldn't move. Oh my, said Berlioz, at this rate we'll never get to the ball on time. Uh, everybody, put on your concert tailcoat so we can be ready to start as soon as we get there. Just then, a schnauzer came trotting over the hill. He took one look at the cat and sniffed. Oh, it's furball like you can't pull a bandwagon here. Let me have that rope. He panted and pulled, but the wagon stayed in the hole. Berlioz handed out the music. Everyone, take out your instruments. We'll start tuning up here. Along came a prancing billy goat. He looked at the schnauzer and snorted, <laughs> squirt, and let me do it. I'll have this wagon out in no time. The billy goat strained forward, but to his surprise, he got nowhere. Berlioz checked his pocket watch. There wasn't much time left. He was about to give up when he heard a new voice. Allow me, said a plow horse coming across the field. This will be easy. I spend my days pulling. But even the plow horse couldn't move the mule. Berlioz tugged at his ears. It was almost time for the ball to begin. He looked around and saw a large ox lumbering toward them. Everyone, tune up. Here comes someone who can pull us out. You're saved, roared the ox. This poor plow horse means well, but only I am strong enough to pull a bandwagon full of musicians. He twisted the rope around his horns and gave a mighty tug. The animals held their breath, but the mule wouldn't budge. The clock on the tower gong, started to chime eight o'clock. Oh no, Berlioz shouted, gong. In desperation, he pulled his bow across the strings, gong. And to his dismay, he heard zoom, 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 buzz, buzz. All the musicians turned to look at the buzzing double bass. Bang! Out of the bass shot a very angry bee. It had been disturbed once too often. The first thing it saw as it flew out of the bass was the hindquarters of the mule. Buzz! With one giant sting, the bee made the mule jump to his feet and pull the bandwagon of musicians out of the hole, down the road, and into the village square, bong, before the bells had stopped chiming. The audience roared. What an entrance, they cried. And the orchestra, already dressed and tuned, began to play. Zoom, 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 zoom. It was hard to say who had more fun at the ball, the musicians or the dancers. Berlioz had never played better. Encore, Berlioz, encore! 
Berlioz came forward. Thank you all. And this evening, I would like to dedicate our encore to the buzzing bee. And if you look very carefully at his music, it says Flight of the Bumblebee, a very famous, very famous piece by Rimsky. Korsakoff. And I have a musical surprise for you, which is some of the original members of the Berlioz Band are going orchestra are going to play uh, the Flight of the Bumblebee for you. <laughs> 